Hello everyone, welcome back to Code Studio. And in this video, we are going to discuss the editorial of the question Theater Square, which appeared in Code Forces beta round number one. I leave the link to the question in the description below. Please head over to the question and just give it a try before moving any further with this video. Let's get into the question and see what exactly is being asked us. So uh, this is theater square, a rectangular shape of n cross m meters. So we are given a rectangle, just assume we are given a rectangle of uh, length n and breadth m. And we are asked to fill the theater square with square stones or square flagstones each of side A. And we are asked to find the least number of flagstones possible. We are also given that uh, we have to cover the whole surface of uh, theater square with the least number of flagstones possible. And we are also uh, we are also said that we can increase the surface covering the theater square by a little, uh, considering keeping the least number of squares uh, in mind. Because sometimes th this being a rectangle and uh, the squares which may not exactly fit into the theater square, we'll discuss about why will it not fit. And we can just increase the squares that are fitting in by just increasing the uh, surface that has to be covered by the theater square. Uh, but we have to also ensure an important point in the question. It's given that the sides of flagstone should be parallel to the sides of square. So what does this actually infer to? We can also have the squares fitted in uh, rhombus shape patterns, right? Instead of squares being parallel to the X and Y axis or the N and M axis, we can also have uh, they aligned uh, or inclined at 45 degrees, making it a rhombus shape or some other angle, making it irregularly aligned to the uh, axis. So we are strictly advised that we have to only follow parallel axis with the sides of rectangle and sides of square. That's fine. So we are given N, M and A, which are uh, actually the dimensions of the rectangle and dimensions of the square respectively. So what exactly is the point that I want to make uh, in this question is, let me give you an example. Let's just say you have a rectangle uh, and you have 10 blocks on one side and 10 blocks on another side. And you also have these blocks covered completely on the rectangle, fine. So how do you find how many rectangles are covered on the complete rectangle? You take this 10 blocks on the sides uh, and 10 blocks on the sides and you multiply them both, right? So 10 times 10 is 100. So you just do it like that. We take the number of uh, blocks that are accommodated on one side of the rectangle and the stones that are accommodated on one side of the rectangle. And then we multiply them both to find out how many uh, blocks are exactly covering the whole rectangle. We'll follow the same multiplication principle in our question. We'll find out how many flagstones can be accommodated on one side of the rectangle and how many flagstones can be accommodated on the other side of the rectangle being n side and m side respectively. And then they will multiply these both values to find out how many flagstones are actually required to cover the whole theater square in the least number possible. So how can we find out how many flagstones are accommodated on, uh, on one side of a rectangle first? Let's just say one side of a rectangle uh, measures 20 meters and each side of a square measures 5 centimeters or meters uh, in the case maybe. So how do you say how many flagstones can be accommodated in this 20 meter space? 5, 5, 5 and 5. So 5 was 20. So you just do 20 by 5, that's 4. So 4 flagstones are actually uh, required to fill this whole 20 centimeters, right? So, so if the length is n and size of the square is a, how many flagstones would you think would be accommodated on this side? n by a, perfect. But what is the case when n is not exactly divisible by a? Uh, in this case, let's take an example. Let's just say the length is 21 and the length of the square is as usual 5 units. How will you fit or how many will you fit in this sector? If you take 4 flagstones, they correspond to 20 meters. You have 1 meter left out of the uh, covered space, right? But you have each square to be 5 meters. Even if you put this square on this 1 meter uh, distance, 4 meters are coming out of the uh, square, uh, out of the rectangle, that is theater square, I mean. So we can do that, right? It is given in the question that we are allowed to cover the surface larger than the theater square, but with the least number of flagstones. 
right so that is the case we have we are using the least number of flagstones here we'll take five flagstones to fill out the 21 length so how is this calculated using general lens that is n and a so n by a gives four so n by a plus one so we are just taking the ceiling function of n by a fine um same is the case with m side you find out if m is divisible by a we write down the number of flagstones required to cover or accommodate it as of m by a or else we'll write m by a plus one if it's not divisible fine so then we'll multiply these both values to find out actually how many squares are required to cover the whole rectangle or the whole data square in this case that is the uh, th that is the point we are driving through this question and we are going to solve that using the same method so let's get into our code editors and start coding with that thing let's just fill out the basic uh, structure of the c++ code So the input method given in the question is you will be given n, m and a values. So let's just um, write down n, m and a. Um, we have to also uh, ensure that uh, the n, m and a maximum values are given to be around 10 power 9. So we should be including long long ints instead of normal integers. And uh, let's just input them into our program. Uh, let's also declare the final variable that has to be printed. Uh, let's also make it uh, long long int and let's just assume it to be uh, res or result. So res is nothing but. So we have to check for this case. Let's start with n as the base case. So we'll find out first n then we'll multiply this value with the number of flagstones that can be accommodated on the m side. Fine. So so we have to check for the condition if n is divisible by a. So if n is divisible by a, that means n percentile a is equal to 0. So if n percentile a is equal to 0, we have to write down uh, the result is n by a in this case. We will also multiply this in the further step. Okay, This is just the, uh, this res just corresponds to number of flagstones on the n side. Okay, So I am uh, I'm using the ternary operator if you have just observed that because in competitive coding uh, we have to also uh, acquaint ourselves with some tricks that uh, that are not generally used in the actual development sector because it's it's kind of really uh, time taking to write if block and else block right so it's better if you use ternary operators and get acquainted with ternary operators that can be just finished in single line so n percentile equal to zero then we'll return n by a or else we'll return n by a plus 1 as discussed in the earlier um, part and we'll also multiply res that we obtained in the last step or the above step and we'll multiply this with number of flagstones that are required on the m side so again we'll be using the ternary operator here see how easily we are able to finish in single line m percentile a equal to 0 then we'll return m by a or else we'll return m by a plus 1 done so we got so this is actually the number of flagstones on n side and this is n side multiplied by m side got it uh, so the final uh, line is pretty simple we have to just print it out onto the screen see out res and then we have to print it on a new line done we are good to go let's just submit this question and uh, check if you are right on the code forces judge or not Okay, let's just choose our uh, compiler because we are using C++. This is uh, the compiler or the language we have to be choosing is GNU G++ 17. So we'll choose our file. And then just submit it. Running on test. Yeah, our code got accepted. Fine. So 
this is how you solve the question. Uh, so the key points that we need to be taking uh, out of this question is we have to always analyze with some examples how the things are going. We can all, always take the example given in the question itself that's 664 or else we can just develop some uh, other examples and we have to also keenly observe the instructions given in the question. Here the instructions given are we can exceed the area so that gives us the clue that sometimes the area can be exceeded uh, and the, the second point is the square side should be parallel with the rectangle side so that clearly ensures that we do not include the rhombus side or some inclined angle sides and uh, the third point we ha you have to take out from this uh, video is you have to get yourself acquainted with using uh, the ternary operator instead of writing if else blocks you, you can use if else block uh, if the if writing the condition is really difficult for you on ternary case but it's almost the same right you write down the condition in the parenthesis that you will be writing here and using a question mark and writing the if case or else using the else case but this is only possible if you are writing uh, a ternary operator for a single line uh, if block if you want to write for a multi line if uh, if and else cases you you have to obviously use if and else uh, cases that's all for this video please do like share and subscribe to code studio Sciankit. signing off Sciankit. bye